What's up guys, Marcus here at Black Elvis. I'm here with Dan Staten today. Elk Shape, you probably know him. If you don't, you should. He's got a sweet podcast. Dan is here to talk about which optics he uses, which scenarios he's using them in, and why. Yeah, let's, uh, let's break down Vortex. That's what I'm familiar with. I've owned other brands as well. I do have kind of that approach to glass that it is kind of a buy once, cry once mm -hmm. investment, yep. and it should last you your lifetime, which is nice about Vortex. They have that VIP unconditional warranty. If you break it, they'll fix it, and really no questions are asked, and that's not very common nowadays. So that's why I like Vortex, and I think the best thing that you can do is decide what am I going to be hunting where am I going to be hunting? And then work your way backwards from there. Ultimately, a, a pair of 10 by 50s or 10 by 42s binos are gonna be where you're gonna to wanna to start. Uh, for me, I like the 10 by 42 traditionally. The field of view is not obnoxious to wear. Um, I can still pick up animals from a long ways away, but also when I'm in tight with animals, if I pull those up, I just, I'm not overwhelmed with too tight. And, and you can really grid and learn how to glass proper with your starter 10 by 42s. In fact, I would argue that that's the most popular size or dimensions of glass that anyone uses out west. And I don't think you'll regret. However, if you do go with like a pair of 20 by 56s or 12 by 50s, there may be times where you're over glassed and you're gonna wish you could fall back. So. The safe bet is to get a pair of 10 by 42s. Those will be the most universal. That's probably, I probably use 10 by 42s 95% of the time. And then I use my 65 spotter. But what would you say the percentage of time you, you use this, this bino is? 99% of the time. The only time I'm gonna go really big glass is if I'm going to places that are super special, really big country, where I can sit down and put giant binoculars on top of a tripod and glass. Uh, the only examples I could really give you would be like probably bear hunting in the spring. It's mainly glassing from one master vantage the entire day. Mm -hmm. uh, or possibly like somewhere like high desert mule deer where you're just, you're gonna be, you're trying to pick apart and find an ear or an antler or just a little tail, you know, so you're really trying to find an animal that's already bedded down. That's where you're gonna to wanna to get in a comfortable position, get yourself some big binos. Uh, but you know what I do in those instances? I usually just use a spotter. Yeah, so. that's a safe bet. A big consideration for me with, with binos too is size and weight. I'm curious as to hear your thoughts on that as well. Is that something that greatly affects your decisions on which bino you're taking out. If you're taking out the 12 by 50s or the 10 by 42, you can see these are significantly different sizes. Yeah, so yeah, the, the 50s are just too much for, for what I'm willing to pack on my chest, right? I, they're, they're great and they, have their, they serve their purpose, but size does matter. And especially on day nine or 10 of a seven day hunt. You know what I mean? Like you're really, not you're doing your best physically. You, you're probably sleep deprived. You, you're probably dehydrated. You might be homesick. And I mean, I've seen so many hunters start out with all the cool stuff in their backpack day one, and by day two, they're pulling stuff out left and right. This is cool, but you may regret this just after a few days of lugging it yeah. around. Just go down to a, a nice, reasonable 10 by 42. I recommend the Razors. I think that's some of the best glass Vortex makes. It doesn't weigh anything and you're not, gonna, you're not gonna miss anything. This is gonna still get you where you need to be. We've talked about 10 by 42s, 12 by 50s a little bit. Where does a 10 by 50 come in the lineup for you? When would you use this over one of the others? A 12 by 50 is gonna be a, a scenario where I'm gonna bring a tripod with me. I'm gonna take this little attachment off and I'm gonna hook it on and I'm gonna sit in a chair and I'm just gonna, I need to stare over a lot of country for a long period of time, squinting into a spotting scope does not sound good. Whereas yeah. I can have great eye relief and just grid about the country. That's when I'm gonna use bigger binos, but it's gonna certainly be on a tripod or you're gonna miss a lot of things that you would have seen. So tripod and this big a glass are married together. Yeah, that objective really can help, especially with light transmission and low light scenarios. If you've got an original 10 by 42, I mean, you're working off a 42 
millimeter diameter. Whereas you bump up to that 50 and you're going to let that much more light in for those scenarios when you're looking at stuff at last light or first light and you need to see the differences. Yeah. Last light is going to be when you're going to see more, more game, obviously, I think, uh, especially new hunters coming out. Like, um, it's the harsh light midday. It is tough to glass with the shadows and the things like that. And most animals are, by nature, bedded. Yep. Whereas the last light, this could make a difference in you seeing something that you would not have seen with the 42s, especially if it's on a tripod and you're in a, you know, a really good, comfortable position with great eye relief. You're going to pick up more animals. All right, Dan, let's talk spotting scopes. Here we've got the 50, 65, and 85 objectives. When do you use which one? Well, if I had to pick between the three on the table right now, I'm gonna go with this one simply because it's angled. I am not a fan of straight uh, spotters because it just doesn't, I mean, that, now you have to have a tripod, that's big. Mm -hmm. yep. and you gotta stand it all the way up or you gotta get on your knees, it's just, the more uh, comfortable you are glassing, the more time you're going to spend behind the glass. And if you start adding it up, more time behind the glass means more animals. And more animals can mean more stocks. More stocks can mean more tags punched. Go angled. More eye relief. It's comfortable. The 65 is the sweet spot. I mean, this is giant 85 millimeter. And there's a time and a place to really have to look great distances. Four miles, five miles, six miles. But most of the time we're looking at an animal and we're going to get the phone scope out we're going to digiscope the 65 is fine and all we're looking at is we just want to see how cool that bull looks like he looks like a big bull let's pull him up oh he's a really cool bull and that's going to be awesome to post that content on instagram no i'm joking but it's really not a big deal between the two but then when you start to weigh them ounces turns to pounds I just don't see a big benefit of an 85 millimeter unless you are probably a sheep hunter and you're trying to count, you know, rings on a sheep to see if it's eight years old or not. Yep. So ultimately us blue collar average hunts, 65 is going to do the job. And then if you're really concerned about weight, then that would drop down to the 50. And that's a big factor of consideration as well. Going from the 65 to 85, I mean, you add a lot of mass and weight right there. And if if you're a backcountry hunter, yeah, there are circumstances when you do need it, like on a sheep hunt, you need that 85 millimeter objective, but most of the time this 65 is gonna be your jam and it's gonna work in a lot of scenarios and it's lightweight, easier to pack. So that is something to think about as well. And then you've got the 50. When do you take the 50 out? The 50 is when I'm just being basically stubborn. Like I really want to have a spotter, mm -hmm. but I don't, I'm really like, I'm cutting the end of my toothbrush off. I'm really weighing out everything. My food's dialed. So it's like more of a backcountry style hunt where it may be really nice to have that. It's gonna, it's gonna play a role, but it's not gonna be fun to carry around a 65. So it is good to have that option. The 50 is never going to give you, you're not gonna be able to see as much compared to the 65, yep. straight up. And obviously with the 85, but I would still argue like if you were budgeting, you're like, man, I don't know which one to get. I would buy the 65 over the 50, nine times out of 10. I'm gonna use it more. This is gonna give you just a little bit more than the binos. And so what's the point? So if you can get these on a tripod, they're gonna compete with the 50. Same with the 12 by 50s or the 10 by 50s. These binos are gonna compete with that. This is probably gonna be a tough position for me to take unless I just absolutely gotta have a spotter in the back country, then I'm gonna bring the 50 and I'm just trying to save weight. Be a student, learn how to glass and be more patient, get more comfortable with your tools and then put yourself in a very comfortable position to glass from your master vendor. I think ultimately these are just tools that are going to help you have more success if you're willing to be more patient and sit behind them and find your quarry. Absolutely. All right, that's it from us in our conversation. Let us know your thoughts. When do you choose which optic you want to take out in the field? Be that a bino or a spotter, let us know. We'd also be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thanks for watching.